The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... The family has, for a long time, been one of the strongest institutions of our civilization. There are those who swear by the sanctity of the family. There are others who have said, God gives us relatives. Thank God we can choose our friends. Only when the family is attacked can one judge its true strength. Either it falls apart and disintegrates, or it holds firm. Our story deals with such a test. Do you know anything about life after death, Ellie? You know, like reincarnation, how the dead sometimes come back to still another life? I don't believe in any of that nonsense. Please get to the point. Well, here, let me take off these dark glasses. Now, the eyes may look a little strange, but look into them. Tell me what you see. Oh, Oh, no. Our mystery drama, A House Divided, was adapted from the great Greek tragedy, Electra. It was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss. It stars Joan Lovejoy and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The year is 1917. All Europe was now at war. In April, President Woodrow Wilson asked Congress to join in the war against the Germany of Kaiser Willem II. Joe boys were already off to France, singing, We won't be back till it's over, over there. But in a large Midwestern city of the United States, another kind of war was just starting. With the promised passage of the 18th, the Prohibition Amendment, the forces of crime began to gather their troops in a campaign to fight that law. And all laws. Augie Mannon, District Attorney's Office. It's Claire, Augie. Oh, hi, darling. What's up? Uh, uh, why are you calling at this time of day? Uh... Well, I had to. Augie, I'm so worried. Something must be done. A- and we can't wait. Well, uh, the children, uh, they're, they're all right. Aaron's in no trouble. No, no. He's, he's fine. Hmm. Ellie off in another of her moves? No, it, it's not the children this time, Augie. It's you. Me? Yes, I... I ran into Jim Allen at Enrici's, or, or better, he ran into me. He's out for no good, Augie. He means to give you trouble. So what else is new? You're getting in his way, he said. Well, yeah, that's my job, darling. It's, it's what I'm paid to do. I'm frightened, darling, for you and for the children. Well, if he's said anything to threaten our two kids... Well, I... No, not in so many words, but there's no telling where Big Jim will stop. Darling, uh, why do you tell me all this as if I didn't know already? Well, because Alan mentioned something that I can't repeat on the telephone. You can't? Well, you told me more than once you never you never know who might be listening. Mm, true. As soon as you get through, please meet me at 6 o'clock. Where? At 438 East Floyd. Well, East Floyd? Uh, darling, that, that's clear on the other side of town. Yes, I know run-down neighborhood. Why there? Oh, Augie, I have a reason, a most important one. You'll have to trust me. You'll be there then at, at six? Oh, if you say so, well. But what's the mystery? Just be there and you'll see. Well, I, I've got to run. Goodbye, dear. See you soon. <laughs> You're really something clear, really. You never know who might be listening. <laughs> well, the important thing, my darling, is it shall surely be there. Uh, on time? Augie? Always on time. Mm. 
He'll be there on the dot of six, or I don't know my Augie. You know, I can see his face when I walk into that garage and say, we never met Mr. D.A., not formally. That is, my name is Alan, Big Jim Allen. You'd be surprised how many things we share in common. <laughs> That's very funny, Jim. <laughs> that ought to kill him. Down, Corey. It's that one over there, number 438. 438 East Floyd. Hey, what do you know? The old Hastings garage. I remember the time, boy. Yeah, I remember, I... Corey. Hey, look at all them broken windows. <laughs> Not one person on the street, eh? Shame what's happened to the neighborhood. You know, there was a time Just keep when the they... motor running. You bet, boss. Hand me the suitcase. <clears throat> you got it. I won't be long. You're very punctual, Mr. Menon. Who? Who's that? Here, I'll put the flashlight on my face. Can you see? Alan. Big Jim Allen. Oh, what are you doing here? I could ask you that. I'm expecting my wife. Here? In an old abandoned garage in a deserted neighborhood? You must be kidding. Alan. Where's Claire? Where is my wife? What if... What have you done to her? Now, that's, uh, that's a good question, Mr. Menon. What do you want? Just a little peace and quiet. Alan, if you have so much as laid a hand on Claire... Now, that's something I would not like to take an oath on. If you have hurt her or my kids in any way... I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Menon. Uh, let's see. Now, the last time I saw your wife, she was just fine. Purry like a little kitten. <laughs> she was happy as a clam, resting on a bed. A bed at my address. You filthy liar. Take it easy, man, and you'll last longer. Yes, she's been coming to my place for months. I don't believe you. Oh, no? Why don't you have the guts to face it? Claire is a beautiful woman. She deserves the best. And she doesn't think you're it. If indeed she ever thought so. You see... You're too busy being a D.A. to give her the attention she needs. So, uh... <laughs> she's hitched her wagon to a different star. Mm. You? Me. Uh, just one more thing, Mr. D.A. I've warned you time and again to keep your big nose out of my affairs. You wouldn't listen. But with this last one, the biggest liquor deal I ever pulled, you've gone a little bit too far. Alan, I haven't even My way begun. of thanking you for Claire, you see, I'm not ungrateful, is to give you one last chance to get out of this town tonight. I get on a train or a boat, I don't care where you go. I just never want to see your face or hear of you again. And Claire? Well, Claire's a big girl. She makes up her own mind. Uh, as a matter of fact, she already has. Hmm. Well, my, my children, Aaron, Ellie. Well, Ellie's 18, Aaron's nearly 20. They'll get along. Alan, you're crazier than I thought. My office has a file this thick on you with evidence, with proof. You are going to get your ears pinned back so far. Uh -huh. you... uh -huh. now, you're wrong again, Menon. No one is ever going to touch me, ever. And uh, it certainly won't be you. No? No, no, Augie. Never you. Right. Ellie, uh, open up. It, it's me, Aaron. Come on in. Door's open. Are you, uh, all right, Ellie? I'm drained. I don't like cemeteries. The idea of death and dead people, I, I... I just can't take it. Father's funeral was such a lie. 
A mother in her black dress and veil watching as they lowered father's body into his grave, making as if her little heart was being torn apart. She should have been an actress. Ellie, um, th- there's something that I have to tell you. Yes? I, I just can't stay here. I've, I've got to get away, so... Well, I've enlisted in the Army in, in chemical warfare. I leave for training camp at 5 a.m. What? Why have you done this? Well, I, I told you. And before I leave, there's one thing that... Oh, hold it a minute. Hold them up. Hello? Oh, your big girl is fine and dandy. Karen. Yeah. She's picked up the phone on the upstairs landing. I want to hear this. I have no idea, Jim. What's on your mind? She's talking to her boyfriend. Big Jim the Allen. Hot club? What's that? Oh, a new one. Best speakeasy in town? Well, I'd love to go. Eight o'clock is fine. I'm sure that Ellie and Aaron will be gone by then. Right. <laughs> Bye, dear. The Hot Chalk Club. Aaron, we were right. She had to be in on Daddy's murder all the time. She was the one who set him up, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I felt it all along. Oh. What would I do now, Aaron? Well, you you play along as best you can till I return. Now, uh-huh. don't do anything that'll cause them to suspect that you suspect anything. Uh, and you? Well, between now and 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, I've got one important thing that I must do. Whatever it is, take care of yourself, Aaron. Take very good care. <laughs> Have you got the third stud for this dress shirt? There's one missing. Uh, I uh, I had it in my hand uh, more than a minute ago. Hey, hey, here you are, boss. Oh, fine. Hey, you know, that reminds me of the time. Corey, I was... Corey, here, boss. You know, I've been thinking. I don't trust those kids of Menon's. Well, what have they done? Nothing, nothing, not yet. But still, I have a feeling. They may know who killed their father. I'd like to make sure that they don't talk. Oh. Uh. I got you, boy. No, not quite, Corey. Not so fast. Now, first, I want that girl watched and guarded 24 hours a day. Ellie is not to leave their house unless you have a tail on her. No phone calls in or out without a tap. No shopping, no dating, nothing. Unless one of our boys is close behind. Yeah, she worries me. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. Uh, what about the boy? Uh, Aaron is another story. That one I have to think about. Anything in the evening paper? No, no, not too much. The cops still ain't got a clue to the disappearance of uh, Augie Menon. No, that's very interesting. Yeah, they fine tooth comb the city. There's not a shadow of the old Augie. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Lake Michigan gets very deep in part. Cement goes down real quick. <laughs> oh, my coat, please. There we are. Now, I think I'm ready for an unforgettable night on the town with the most beautiful widow in the whole Midwest. When we walk into the place, no one will notice me, I promise you. Why do you say that, Jim? Because, my dear, they'll all be saying, who is that gorgeous lady dressed in black? (laughs) Why, they won't even be able to take their eyes off you to see who the gentleman is. Oh, they'll notice. Because it's you. (laughs) Hey, I was... Yeah. Yeah, good crowd. Uh, your friend, the uh, owner of this place? Oh, he does things right, you'll see. Well, have a good time to both of you. Now, watch your step getting out, Mrs. Manning. Thank you, Corey. Yeah, be back at one o'clock, huh? Right. Claire, you're going to have one of the finest meals you ever... Down, down, Claire. Down on the pavement. Hey, are you all right, boy? Yeah, yeah, we're both fine. Here, let me help you off, honey. Where is he? He, he ran off into an alley someplace. Get a good look at him? No, no, it happened so fast. I... It, was, it was the kid, boy. Some young punk. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't believe it. What, what, what is it? That kid that took those shots at you. Huh? I swear to my life. That was your son, Mrs. Menon. What? Your son, Aaron. Aaron? 
Corey, how sure are you? Positive. <laughs> The scriptures offer us two contradictory pieces of advice. One says, Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. But in addition, we are told that we should exact an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It's obvious that neither Jim Allen nor Aaron Menon are prepared to turn any cheeks. That they both agree with the admonition in Genesis that says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood... By man shall his blood be shed. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Four years have gone by. The doughboys who had gone overseas to make the world safe for democracy had come back to find that in their absence, Congress had amended the Constitution so as to make the manufacture and sale of alcoholic beverages illegal. This served as a springboard for the quick mobilization of every criminal element in the country. Among them, men like Big Jim Allen. It's the early 1920s now, and the Jim Allens are riding very high. Enjoying yourself, Claire? <laughs> The most Jim good. And I love you, Miss Red. Oh. You know, I often think they're friends only because I serve and sell the finest booze in town. When my little fleet of motorboats scoot across the lake from Canada... Your rum runner? They bring in only the best. And they make the Coast Guard look like kindergarten kids. Yeah, I got a couple of boats coming over tonight. Uh, by the way, where is uh, that daughter of yours? Oh, Ellie's upstairs in her room. Not feeling well, she said. Yeah. She thinks she's too good for my friend. Oh, Jim, it isn't that. You kept her a prisoner in her own home these past four years. Since Augie passed away and, and Aaron disappeared without a trace. She's almost 22. Don't be too rough on her. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the point. She's grown up. She may have learned to talk. Outside of you, she's all I have. Go a little easy on her, will you? As to that other kid of yours, uh, wherever he disappeared to that night four years ago and saved his life, you know, if he'd stayed here in town, it wouldn't have been for long, even though he is your son. I know that, you. And if he's ever stupid enough to show his face in this city... Let's see how I take to this new dance. Uh, what is it called again? <laughs> the Charleston, yeah. dear. The Charleston. Hold it, Aaron. Hold your fire. Boy, I would have given anything to get that little rum runner, especially that one. Aaron, the Coast Guard can't win them all. Tonight, the fox is thick as soup. We can't even see what we're shooting at. It isn't any easier when they run without light. Yeah, yeah, I know, Peach. Yeah, that's what these rub runners count on to bring their booze across the lake. You know that. What was so special about this one we met? That was one of Big Jim Allen's fleet. So? You win a few, you lose a few. You know, like you in the Army. You were lucky. Yeah, I guess. How many operations did they tell me? Five. Years of them, huh? Hey, uh, why don't we go below for a cup of coffee? I'm freezing. Hey, good idea. I shouldn't have brought that up, huh? Sorry. No, no, I don't mind. At least not anymore. And when that big tank of poison gas exploded in my face back there in those French minefields, Pete, I, I was so close to death, they just about gave me up. My hands, my face burned almost to the bone. I nearly lost my eyes as well. It is. See, that, that's why I wear these dark glasses. You're right. I I was lucky. I can imagine what it was like when they took those last bandages off your face. You looked in the mirror. You saw a complete stranger. I told you my own mother wouldn't know me. That's, that's uh, something I'm counting on. <laughs> you are a lucky fellow. Hey, here's your coffee. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I guess 
Once I was lucky to get into the Coast Guard. You see, Pete, there are certain people around here who think that the Aaron Menon that they once knew is dead. He disappeared into the war someplace. They haven't heard from him in four years, so he must be dead. People who wouldn't hesitate a minute to make Aaron Menon, if they thought he was alive, heavier by uh, two, three pounds of lead. Oh, yeah, I see. Mm. But they'll never recognize me with his new face I've got, courtesy of uh, some of the best medics Uncle Sam provides. Does that include your sister, Ellie? Ellie will know me. How, Aaron? Well, let me roll up my sleeve. There you... You see this? Good Lord. What is that? A scar. It's shaped like a lizard or an alligator. Yeah. When I was three years old, I ran into the kitchen and the cook had a pot of boiling water in her hand. It spilled onto my arm and left this scar. I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And when Ellie sees this, she'll know it's me. Mm. A little more coffee? Oh, yeah, thank you. Well, uh, we ought to be ashore in half an hour. I've got a very busy night ahead of me. What is it, Corey? Uh, some kid downstairs, a young punk. He wants to see you. Who is he? What does he want? He says he's got some kind of news about Aaron Menon or... Aaron Menon? What kind of news? I don't know. Something about Aaron's body. He said he, he had to speak to you. Aaron's body? Mm-hmm. Where's he from? No kid in town. He's with the parish, Mom. Or, so he says. <sighs> Where is he? Outside, waiting in the hall. Okay, let him wait. Meantime, you keep an eye on him every minute. Ellie, dear, stop being such a stubborn girl. Now that our guests have gone, your father wants to talk to you. Jim Allen is your husband, not my father. My father is dead. Murdered. Jim's almost out of patience with you, and so am I. I've waited this long, Mother. I can wait a little longer. For what? For the day my brother Aaron comes to see me. A visit from the dead. There are no such thing as ghosts. I have hope. Of what? Of Aaron coming back, and with one bold stroke, rescuing his little sister from the big, bad ogre. Wake up, Ellie. You're a little grown up for fairy tales. Besides, if he ever did turn up, he'd be in trouble, big trouble. And I would do nothing to protect him. Even if I could. I find it hard to understand you, Mother. He's your son. He tried to kill the man who is my husband. Your husband? The man whose hands you'd like to think are clean? The man who almost wept with joy the day he heard my father had been murdered? I won't listen to that kind of talk. The truth hurts, doesn't it? Come in. Ellie. If you don't mind, I'd prefer to stay here in my room. Well, you may not when you hear what i got to tell you. What is it, Jim? Young fella downstairs turned up out of nowhere. One of Parrish's mob, a new kid. Well, what is he to do with me or, or Ellie? Well, a kid comes with some unexpected news. Aaron, he says, is dead. He says he was killed. That's news? Uh, not the way you think. Not in the war, but here, right here in town. I don't believe it. Yeah, this morning. The kid was in on it, he says. Oh, where is the body? Yeah, exactly when I asked. Well, they've got it stashed away someplace. The viewing price is $5,000, worth every cent of it, to know that Aaron is really out of my hair forever. Even if it's true. That still leaves one of us, Mr. Allen. Yeah, yeah, how well I know. Meantime, we'll make a little date with the young man downstairs, Buddy Cummings. A date to witness the remains of your late but unlamented brother, Aaron. Claire? Yes, Jim. Come on downstairs. Oh, uh, Ellie, I think you might find it interesting to talk with this young fella, too. So won't you join us? This one? I think I will. <laughs> Mr. Allen, we've got the body. Identification unmistakable. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you be sure? Well, you know about the scar on his right forearm? Yeah, I do. Well, then, you won't be disappointed. Um, Jim, if you don't need me... No, I think we've uh, 
done all we have to. You, uh, you coming, Ellie? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd, uh, like to stay and talk a little more with, uh, Mr. Cummings here. Be my guest, as always. Mr. Cummings? Yes? Yeah. Just who are you? Where do you come from? Does that make any difference? What do you know about my brother, Aaron? Where's his body? The living are not usually buried. What's that supposed to mean? Well, whatever you want to make of it. You... You had something to do with my brother's death? In a manner of speaking. You killed him? Maybe. You dare tell me that? Ellie, do you know something about life after death? How the dead sometimes come back to still another life, sometimes in other shapes, long after they've passed out of this life. You know, like, uh, reincarnation. I don't believe in any of that nonsense. What are you getting at? I do believe in it. In my own way. Please, get to the point. No, no, no be patient with me. Here, let me take off these dark glasses. Now, the eyes may look a little strange, but... Look into them. Look right into my eyes. So? Do you see anything that looks familiar? I do. But... No. No, oh, no, it can't be. I... I don't believe what I'm looking at. This is some trick. No. No trick. Here. My right arm. I'll roll up the sleeve. Alligator scar. No. No, no, you, you, you put it there. All right. All right, listen to me. Your stuffed animal. Your favorite, the one you slept with till you were nearly nine. Yes? What was it? A cross between a teddy bear and a kangaroo. What was its name? You called it Joe Jerusha. Aaron? You are my brother, Aaron. <laughs> oh, I counted on your coming back. Aaron, what happened to your face? The war. Ellie, you are looking at some of the finest plastic surgery they can do these days. It's incredible. I'm back, but nobody knows that I'm here. Now, we have some work to do. I, I know what you're thinking. You can count on me. Our mother. She is less than dirt. And he, big Jim Allen, he's... Oh, they're well matched. They deserve each other. Ellie... They say that no death is a good death, but when those two are lowered into their graves, their deaths are going to be the best thing that's ever happened on this earth. And it will happen. I swear it will. We have heard that he who insists on getting his revenge keeps his own wounds green, which would otherwise heal of their own accord. And we've also been told that he that will avenge every wrath, the longer he liveth, the less he hath. Despite this, Ellie and Aaron Menon are resolved that the murder of their father will not go unavenged, that the murderers will not go unpunished. Just how will this happen? I shall return shortly with Act Three. In Hamlet, another story of retribution, the ghost of Hamlet's murdered father instructs him to revenge his father's death. But the young prince of Denmark keeps putting it off until eventually his procrastination leads to his own death. For the young menons, Aaron and Ellie, time is running very short. Aaron, his face altered beyond recognition by an accident in World War I, has convinced Jim Allen, the murderer of his father, that he is another man called Buddy Cummings. Allen is about to offer Aaron, or Buddy, a most unusual assignment. 
Do you think you can pull it off, buddy, without Ellie suspecting anything? Oh, I'm sure I can, Mr. Allen. Uh, why are you so sure? A weekend up in the mountains? Why not? In the first place, she'd give anything to get away from here, if only for a day or two. Yeah. Her, uh prison, as she calls it. And even though she knows I'll be watching every move she makes, I, I think she kind of trusts me. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, has taken a liking to you, which should keep her off guard. Okay, now, Corey, I'll give you a road map, directions to the place, and the keys. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, Saturday, I'd get an early start if I were you. Okay, I will. Yeah, just uh, one last thing. Now, you do the job the way it's best for you. Only get rid of the body the way I suggested. It can't fail. It never has. We understand each other perfectly, Mr. Allen. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, it's Jim from now on. Big Jim, if you like. Thank you. Now, next item on the agenda. A little trip tonight to view the last remains of Ellie's brother, Aaron. Whenever you say. Now, it's only right and proper that a civilized man pay his respects to the dead. Huh? Don't you agree? we picked. Rain's coming down so hard you can hardly see. Well, we're just about there. In fact, uh, we've arrived. This is it. Mm, looks like we'll have to make a run for the building if we don't want to get drenched. We'll manage. Uh, umbrella? No, no. The wind would blow it inside out. Let's run for it, huh? Okay. Follow me. Here he goes. <laughs> Otherwise, all right. You know, it's a funny thing. I could have sworn that... Anything wrong, Jim? No, no, not really. I just had a feeling I'd been here before. Uh, Yeah. Oh, uh, look out, Jim. You don't want to hit your head on that big beam. You might get hurt. (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, Where have you got Aaron's body? It's uh, just around this corner. Get your flashlight ready, Jim. It's ready. Fine. You know, this place gives me the creeps. Where are we? We'll, we'll be out of here in no time. You, uh, you got the five grand? Now you just show me Aaron's body, then let's get out of here. It's like a morgue. Yeah. Who should know better than you? What's that supposed to mean? Think back, Jim. It's not that long ago. Four years. 1917. East Floyd, number 438. 438 East Floyd. I knew, I knew there was something about this place that was familiar. And it's no coincidence that it's the same place, the same location, where you shot down Augie Mammon. What? Aaron's body is here, in the same place where you rubbed out his father. Now, where'd you get that crazy idea? I read the papers, Jim, and I also can read between the lines. All right, just show me the body. Let's get out of here. You're looking at it. Where? Where? I don't see anything. In front of you. Right here. All I see is you. That's right, Mr. Allen. Hey, heck, give me that, my slider. Keep your hands exactly where they are. Don't move. Now, what is this? You going out of your mind? Now, just put down that gun, huh? Show me Aaron's body. You're looking at it, friend. But, buddy, you're... I am Aaron Menon. And if you're still in doubt, look at this scar on my right forearm. Recognize it? Aaron. Aaron, what are you going to do? Oh, that's a silly question for a man as smart as you. You took my father's life. I owe you something. No, no, no. Look, I can explain. I'm sure you can. My father always paid his debt. You and my mother should have remembered that. Hello? Ellie, it's me, Aaron. Where are you? The the other side of town. Are you all right? Just fine. Ellie, it's done. Done? Finished. All attended to. Tell my mother, Big Jim sent a message. He won't. Good. Very good. I wonder if he's in 
do I see you? A few more things I have to do tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning. Here? At the house? Yeah, where else? Uh, I have a better idea, I think. Oh, uh, what is it? Tomorrow is an anniversary of sorts. Of course. Someone we know will make a trip to Good Hope Cemetery to lay flowers on a grave. I'll be there, too. What time? Uh, around nine. Okay. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. This place is so deserted. Not a soul in sight. It's early. You'd think they'd take better care of the graves. Perpetual care, indeed. They could look better, Mother. All these weeds. That's why I bring my own garden shears and the plants and the little state. I, I feel it's the least I can do in memory of your father. The very least. Meaning? Such complete devotion. Such warm, personal care. Oh, spare me your sarcasm, Ellie. A pity you show so much more love for my father's memory. Then you showed for him when he was still alive. Don't start that again. Not here. And not today. Please hand me that small flower pot. No, no. The one over there. The ice plant. Why do you suppose it's called an ice plant? Any idea, Mother? None. Maybe it's because it has no heart. Or one of ice. Plants don't have hearts. Neither do some people. Ellie, once and for all, your father is dead. Nothing you do or say will ever bring him back. That's true, Mother. And no amount of flowers or these plants upon his grave will ever, ever clean your heart of guilt. Must I hear that again for the last time, Ellie? It may indeed be the last time. So listen well, Mother. For four long years, I have waited for this chance. I've watched and waited with a patience I didn't think I had while you brought your lover to my father's house, my father's bed, even when my father was still living. I don't have to hear this. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, no, it hurt. Let go of my arm. Then listen. Since that time, my heart has been filled not only with grief and sorrow, but with hatred, poisonous hatred for both you and Alan, but especially you. I am your mother. Only because you brought me into this world. And then you thought your job was finished. You spent more time in front of your mirror admiring your beauty than you ever did on Alan or on me. You always hated me. And with good reason. What reason is there for a child to hate its mother? You? You ask that? Oh, I'm sorry to be late. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Manor. Buddy? Buddy Cummings. What are you doing here? Is something wrong with Jim? I, uh, I came on an errand. Something I have to do. Here in the cemetery? F for, for Jim? What is it? Oh, uh, Jim didn't send me. This one is for me. For you? I don't understand. Tell us. What do you want me to? Why? Why are you taking your glasses off? So you can look into my eyes. See anything familiar? I, I, I don't believe it. Show your arm. Here. My right Oh, it can't be. You've seen this scar before, haven't you? Yes, Mother. It's me, Aaron. But, but, but your face. What happened to your face? Long story. And we haven't got much time. Why are you trembling, Mother? What do you want of me? Didn't you think there'd be a day of reckoning? Didn't you know that Ellie and I would never rest until we faced our father's murderers? And paid them back. Well, when Jim hears about this... Oh, his... Big Jim. Big Jim is dead. You... You killed him? Yes. 
And now... Now it's your turn, Mother. Aaron? You wouldn't dare. You don't have the courage to kill in cold blood your own mother. Oh, no. I know my son. Aaron, what are you waiting for? She... She's right, Ellie. I... I can't. I can't. Give me your gun. No, no, Ellie. Don't you move, Mother. Stay exactly where you are. Ellie. What are you doing? This pair of garden shears she brought to her. Not her, Aaron. His points are sharp. And his blades cut. Ellie, no. Like this. (laughs) Jenny. Now, remember, Ellie, when we get to the gate, we're supposed to be leaving for the weekend in Alan's place in the mountains. I know. And my job is to see that I come back alone. Without you, Alan's last instructions. Whoever's on duty at the gate will see that I'm, I'm very pleased. Right. Now, here we are. Okay. Morning, buddy. Morning, Miss Menon. Oh, uh, good morning, Corey. Uh, what are you doing here at the gate? Well, the regular guy is off till 12 o'clock. I'm helping out. Mr. Allen's let me out for the weekend. A trip up to his place in the mountains. Yeah, yeah I know all about it. He gave me full instructions. Uh, here's the keys, buddy. And a road map. And full directions. Mm-hmm. And after last night's rain, looks as if we'll have a good day. Yeah, yeah, it looks that way. And see that you take good care of the young lady, huh, buddy? I'm sure you will, Corey. Won't let her out of my sight for one minute. Uh, here, here. Let me get these gates open for you. There we go. Have fun. And be careful driving on those winding roads. We don't want anybody to get hurt, right? <laughs> right. So long, Corey. Well, where do we go, Ellie? I don't know. Just drive. I'm glad it's over. So am I. I feel relieved. Me too. Sooner or later, we'll be discovered. You know that. I suppose so. And charged with murder. I don't care now. We did what we both knew we had to do. The law may see it differently. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I agree. For the first time since our father's death, I feel I'm free. And so do I. My brother. did catch up with Ellie and Aaron. And to the law, murder was murder, no matter what the justification. The last words of the ancient Greek playwright Euripides in his version of Electra read, As we move through the open valleys of air, we champion none who are stained in sin. So let no man be desirous of evil, nor sail with those who have broken their oaths. As God to man, I command you. I will return in a moment. Many of our celebrated playwrights have gone back to the tragedies of the ancient Greeks for inspiration. Our own Eugene O'Neill, among others. Why? For one thing, the Greeks had discovered the deeply moving key to so much of what troubles the human heart. So many of the things that shape our destinies. And this, some 2,400 years before Dr. Sigmund Freud listened to his first patient on that famous black leather couch in old Vienna. Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Larry Haynes, Rosemary Rice, Russell Horton, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre.